In this video, I'll explain how you can use an ease to control the distribution of start times of staggered animations. I'll use my handy visualizers to help you understand exactly how this advanced concept works. In GSAP3 Express, we talked about how the stagger object allowed us to set the amount of time that our staggered animations would have their start times spread out across, as well as the from value, which is the direction. So right now, over the course of five seconds, each one of these little threads is gonna scale in uh, with a linear dispersion of the start time. So it all looks very even as they're coming in. You know, and I showed you we could change from to end or edges so now the effect we're going to get here is that it's going to start on the right and then go to the left but the timing is extremely consistent and linear but what we can do what's new is that we can add an ease that's going to dictate how the start times are distributed so right now i'm just going to do a power two and when we watch this you know what let me set it back to start real quick just so that we're not adding any confusion check it out You'll see it's like sort of one after the other at the beginning, but towards the end, they come in almost simultaneously, all right? Um, to make that even more extreme, I could do a power four. So what you'll see here is that at the beginning, they're gonna come in sort of one after the other, but towards the end, they all sort of show up at the same time. Now, you may not be able to visualize, well, what does a power four ease look like? or why is power four dot in different? You know, with power four dot in, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have them start at the same time in the beginning and then slow down at the end. So what I wanna do is jump over to my special ease visualizer to show you exactly what's happening here. All right, so here I have my distributed start times visualizer. Now, what I want you to do the first time I hit this restart button is just pay attention to what happens on the bottom edge here as the bars are being revealed. So I'm gonna hit restart and you're gonna see that these bars come in in a consistent method, all right? They're all animating in at equal intervals. So let me just pause this. And what that means is that as each bar here is scaling up, you'll see we have this little step pattern that pretty much shows the amount of time between each new bar coming in, and you're gonna see that it's absolutely equal and consistent, okay? That's because right now I'm using a linear ease. So the linear ease is gonna be a straight line, and for this example, we're just going to imagine that the amount that we set in the stagger object is 10 seconds, okay? In reality, it's more like three, but I don't wanna to have to wait 10 years every time I play this demo. So the way we're gonna read this graph is that if I go to this bar right here, we're gonna go up to where it intersects the easing curve, and we're gonna see that this one starts at, we'll say, a time of two. If I go about halfway through here, this bar sort of in the middle is gonna start at a time of five seconds, all right? So for all these bars that I have here, their start times are equally distributed. Let's just finish running that one more time and we'll watch it just one more time with the linear ease. And again, watch along the bottom how they all come in at a consistent rate over that amount of time. Um, let's change this ease over to a power one. So when I do that, you're gonna see something different on the bottom here. You see they sort of sped up at the end. Let me restart. They come in kind of slow and then zoom, come in fast. So now let's look at this curve here. What you wanna pay attention to is wherever these steps between the bars are taller, that means that there's more time in between the distributed start times of those bars. As this curve flattens out here, these bars right here that I'm highlighting, they all virtually have the same start time, so they're gonna be coming in at the same time. And the reason for that is because the ease curve up here, it flattens out at the top. Let me just finish this off here. And you'll see that these bars here, they all start at what we're gonna say is virtually a time of 10 seconds, assuming they're distributed across an amount of 10. Let's increase the strength of the ease to a power four and now you're gonna see they come in slow at the beginning and then zoom, at the end they all sort of come in at the same time. Well, why is that? Because this ease curve here flattens out at the top. All of these bars here are coming in at a virtual time of 10 seconds or the end of the span of time that we have there. In the beginning here, we have this very steep part of the graph. So this bar here that I'm highlighting is gonna come in, it will say, you know, a time of three seconds 
but we go just a few bars over and this bar here is coming in much later at a time of say seven and a half seconds. So if I restart this again, you're gonna see the beginning bars, there's a lot of space and time between them coming in and at the end it speeds up there, okay? Uh, we can switch this over to a power four in and here you're gonna see sort of the opposite. Let me just click to stop it, uh, restart one more time and click. All of these bars in the beginning come in at virtually the same time. Why is that? Because their start time is pretty much zero seconds. That's where the curve is very flat at the beginning. Towards the end, let's just finish this up, that's where we have the delay in things coming in. Because so the last bar here might come in at a time of 10 seconds, this bar here might come in at a time of like four and a half seconds. So one more time I'll play it and again it's going to start fast and then at the end it slows down the introduction of each element. So remember this ease curve is controlling the dispersion of the start times of all the objects that are being staggered. If I switch this over to end it just means it's going to reverse things. It's still using the same ease curve but we're starting from the right side so that means that things in the beginning are going to come in fast and then we'll slow down towards the end. And remember, wherever we see these big steps, it means there's more time in between the start of each animation. Uh, what else do I have here? A power four in out. So it's going to come in fast, then slow, and then fast again. All right. So hopefully this graph here really helps you understand what's happening. I'm going to give it to you so that you can play around with it and hopefully have a better sense of visualizing how these staggers work. Um, if I were to come in from the center here, again, the ones in the center come in quick, and then as it goes out towards the edges, there's more of a delay in the start times. Let me restart that one more time. I'll pause right here. So the ones that come in in the center first, they're coming in almost at the same time, these guys. Why? Because the curve starts down low. And then as we get towards the edges, you'll see that these steps are increasing, meaning there's more time in between the start times of each of these elements coming in. So it can be a, still a little bit abstract just seeing all these bars grow at the same time. Uh, when you're doing these sort of advanced staggers, I think the effect works really good with text. So let's switch over to another demo. All right, in this demo, we have the word chemical luminescence, which is a word you'll use pretty much every day from now on. And what's going to happen is we're going to be creating an animation that reveals each character. It's going to scale it up and then also scale up each one of these bars. So right now the ease is set to linear. So you're going to see that each element is pretty much introduced in a linear fashion, meaning that there's a consistent amount of time between each element starting its animation. All right. And you can see that in the bars with them all coming in at the same rate and you can also see it with the text all right very equal distribution of start times now if we switch over to a power one what's going to happen you're going to see that it, the dispersion is sort of slow at the beginning and then speeds up at the end so we'll restart one more time so it kind of comes in nice at the end i like this because it adds a little bit of variance and with a long word like this you're not waiting forever for it to come in you get the sort of the idea when it starts what's happening and then towards the end it speeds up if we go over to a power four what are we going to get you'll see that it starts slow at the beginning and then towards the end everything kind of comes in jump at once again a very nice effect now you take something like this and you change it over to center and you have now the text growing out from the center where it starts kind of slow and then speeds up at the end. Uh, if we switch over to a power four in, what are we going to get? A lot of letters show up quick at first and then towards the end it slows down. Uh, let's go from edges. Now those words are going to build on the way in. Previously, stuff like this it would have been a real pain in the neck to programmatically figure out, oh, how am I going to start from the ends and then build quicker towards the center? Uh, but now with GSAP 3, you can just play around and you get some really cool effects. And all we're doing in the code is changing the ease value, all right? We're not doing anything mathematical. Uh, it's all being controlled by that ease. So hopefully this opens your eyes to how much power and fun you can have by distributing the start times based on an ease. 
In a future lesson, I'm going to show you how we can use an ease to distribute the values that we're tweening. So we can do some cool stuff like this, where we have stuff coming in from the top and the bottom. We can switch it over to center. We can go to the ends. We can go to the edges. Um, and you're going to get some really kind of funky um, animations because we're going to be using an ease graph to plot certain property values. All right. It's going to be a. Uh, <laughs> pretty crazy so uh, hang in there follow along and uh, we're definitely gonna get to this it's awesome want more great videos like this be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get notified of new videos being uploaded if you want unlimited access to all my videos demos and cool tips check out my creative coding club subscription details below